Hi, I'm Catherine Tian. And I'm Swapnil Garg. Today we will be presenting our project on automated clear cell renal carcinoma grade classification with prognostic significance. Kidney cancer is one of the 10 most prevalent types of cancer worldwide. And in the United States, the American Cancer Society estimates that there will have been over 63,000 new diagnoses and 14,000 deaths due to kidney cancer in 2017 alone. In our project, we focus on clear cell renal cell carcinoma, the most common type of kidney cancer, comprising 70% of all cases. When a patient is diagnosed with kidney cancer, a biopsy is taken of the cancer cells and a slide is prepared and sent to a pathologist who then grades the cancer, assessing its aggressiveness. The most widely used kidney cancer grading system is the Furman grading system, which assigns grades from one to four in order of increasing severity. When assessing Furman grade, pathologists look at four nuclear characteristics, size, shape, density of chromatin, and prominence of nucleoli. Cells from higher grade tumors have nuclei that are larger, are more irregular in shape, have coarser chromatin, and have more prominent nucleoli. Scientists have also proposed simplified grading systems, such as two-tiered and three-tiered systems. These systems are much easier to grade than the four-tiered grading system, and they reduce the intra-observer disagreement that is prevalent in more complicated systems. We work with a two-tiered simplification, which groups grades one and two together as low grade, and grades three and four together as high grade. However, even with our two-tiered simplification, subjectivity and intra-observer disagreement are problematic. As we will see in later slides, 30% of the patients we look at have disagreeing grades from our two sources when pathologists are choosing out of just two possible grades. Furthermore, manual grading requires experienced, highly trained pathologists' time and effort. Because an accurate diagnosis is essential for optimal treatment, we hope to combat these issues with computational pathology. Our project goals were to create an automatic classifier for Furman grade, reducing human subjectivity while also being significantly faster than manual grading. We also aim to evaluate the strength of our classifier as a prognostic indicator, as well as discover new image features relevant to classification. In order to do this, we use data from the Cancer Genome Atlas, or TCGA's, Clear Cell Renal Carcinoma dataset, which includes 395 patients, each with a hematoxylin and eosine stain whole slide image, along with clinical information such as the patient's age, gender, stage, and survival. Each whole slide image in the data set contained two grade assignments, a TCGA grade given by an attending physician and an institute grade given by our institute pathologist who identified all the regions of interest on each whole slide image as shown on the right, taking the highest grade out of all the ROI to be the grade of the whole slide image. After we restratified our grade labels from four grades to two, we found that 276 patients had grade assignments that agreed, and these patients we called the concordance set while 119 patients had grade assignments that disagreed, and these we call the discordant set. Um, now to give an, pro an overview of our project methods, we first segmented the nuclei in our whole site images and extracted quantitative nuclear features from them. Then we summarized our feature data to be used as input for our classification and feature selection models. Finally, we performed survival analysis to evaluate the prognostic ability of our classification results. For the nuclear segmentation, all the regions of interest were split into smaller image patches. Then we performed color thresholding to identify the nuclei contours and the watershed operation to separate overlapping nuclei. Finally, we applied a size filter to exclude objects of extreme size. As shown in the image in the rightmost column, this contains our segmentation mask, where the white areas were identified as cell nucleus and the black was background. From each segmented nucleus, we then extracted 72 quantitative nuclear features that describe the size and shape, the distribution of color variation, and the smoothness and regularity of the nuclei. Then we summarized our data to the ROI level by calculating two summary features, namely the median and median absolute deviation for each nuclear feature. Then we selected one representative ROI for each patient by taking the median ROI out of all ROIs with the highest grade. With the summary features, we performed six different machine learning algorithms, namely LASSO, ElasticNet, Ridge, Support Vector Machine, Random Forest, and Neural Network, as well as an ensemble of the six algorithms to classify the patients as either low grade or high grade. We used data from the concordance set that set of 276 patients with agreeing grades from our two sources. First, we split the concordance set into a training set and a test set with an 85% to 15% ratio. 
On the training set, we performed 10 fold cross validation to tune the hyperparameters used in our algorithms. And using the selected hyperparameters, we fit a model over the entire training set, which was then evaluated on the test set. To reduce variance, we performed the cross validation 100 times and averaged the classification probabilities on the test set. The classification results of each algorithm are shown in the graph. We measure the accuracy using area under the curve, or AUC, a common metric. Neural network performed the best with an AUC of 0.879, but all our algorithms did quite well with AUCs of above 0.8. One of the algorithms we used, lasso regression, enabled us to find which features were most predictive of grade, as those were the features with the highest magnitude coefficients. The features with the strongest weights shown in the table agree with Fermi grading characteristics and could be new biomarkers for pathologists to look at when assessing Fermi grade. We also performed survival analysis on our results to determine how well they correlated with patient's survival chances. We used grade assignments from our lasso algorithm. Kaplan-Meier curves visualize patient survival probabilities as a function over time, and we looked at Kaplan-Meier curves for the low-grade patients and high-grade patients separately, quantifying the difference between the two curves with the log rank test with a standard p-value significance threshold of 0.05. We also used the Cox proportional hazards model, which can model the effects of multiple variables on hazard where hazard is the instantaneous probability of a patient dying at a specific time, given that the patient has already lived up to that time. We looked at the hazard ratio for low grade versus high grade. We created Kaplan-Meier curves and a Cox proportional hazards model to analyze the prognostic ability of our classification results on the extended test set, which consisted of our original 15% held out test set and the discordant set combined. As shown on the left, the two curves for high-grade and low-grade patients were significantly distinct with a p-value less than 0.05. Um, furthermore, our Cox proportional hazards model was used to obtain the hazard ratio between high-grade and low-grade after adjusting for age, gender, and stage. The Cox model gave us a hazard ratio of 2.029, which means that patients who are classified as high-grade face a risk of death that is twice that as patients who are classified as low-grade. Um, this confirms the prognostic ability of our results. We also performed survival analysis on the concordant set and discordant set separately. Um, the concordant set consists of patients whose TCJ grade and institute grade agreed. As shown by the Kaplan-Meier curves, the two curves are far apart again, showing that our, um, our classification results were indicative of survival. Um, on the Cox proportional hazards analysis, our predicted grade even performed slightly better than pathologists, with a hazard ratio of 1.952 as opposed to 1.917. On the discordance set, our predicted grade even outperformed pathologists' manual grading in terms of prognosis results. The discordance set consisted of patients whose TCGA grade and institute grade conflicted, meaning that if a patient was classified as high grade by TCGA, they would have been labeled as low grade by our institute and vice versa. As shown on the left, the Kaplan-Meier curves for pathologists given grade are virtually indistinguishable, lying right on top of each other. Um, this shows that our, the pathologist given grade was not related to survival at all. On the other hand, our predicted grade was able to successfully distinguish between high grade and low grade patient tumors. It achieved a hazard ratio of 2.059 and a p-value of 0. Uh, 0. 0.001 able to successfully distinguish between high-grade and low-grade patient tumors, even in cases where highly trained pathologists are not able to. Um, on top of that, our predicted grade, amazingly, was able to keep the same performance as it did on the concordance set. This result is significant because it shows that our predicted grade would be able to help pathologists grade more challenging cases and thus improve diagnoses. In conclusion, we developed an automated two-tiered classification system that um, grades the Fermin grade of whole slide images. Our work was the first study to be done on a large and diverse data set, as well as the first kidney cancer study to be including uh, both classification and survival analysis. We extracted quantitative image features to be used as an objective basis for classification, and these Bio, uh, these features could potentially be novel biomarkers associated with grade and prognosis. We also achieved a classification accuracy of AUC 0.879 and validated the prognostic significance of our classification results, finding that our computer model was able to match or outperform pathologists. 
This means that our computer model could potentially provide a very valuable second opinion for pathologists' manual grading and help prevent misdiagnoses. In the future, we would like to engage more pathologists to obtain a consensus on grade for the discordant set. We'd also like to fully automate our process by replacing the one manual step, which was RI identification. We'd also like to validate the robustness of our models on other cohorts and also try to improve nuclear segmentation with deep learning techniques. Finally, we'd like to generalize our pipeline to other types of cancer by training on other data sets. We would like to acknowledge all the following individuals and organizations, especially our mentor, Dr. Jan Hung, for their contributions to our project. Thank you.